Hello and welcome to today's webinar, How to Plan Your Information Management Strategy in 2017. I'm Teresa Resick, Director of Webinars here at AIM, and AIM is your host and producer of today's event. And with me today are leading analysts and consultants respectively. We have Bob Larrabee and Mark Brousseau joining us. IBM Mel is the underwriter of today's webinar, and we thank them for their support. And thank you for taking the time to join us today. And as we get started here, I just want to offer a few pointers for viewing today's webinar while I have the About AIM slide uh, up on the screen for you. By joining our webinars live, you can customize your own viewing experience. So feel free to open or close or resize the different windows that you have available to you. And across the bottom of your screen is a list of all of those widgets uh, or windows available for you. You can download a PDF of the presentation at any time. Just look to the resources list that's to the right side of the slide area. And there's also a few other documents and links in there to help you learn more about what we'll be discussing today. Feel free to ask questions throughout the hour using the Q&A feature. And we will hold these until the end where we should have about five or 10 minutes to answer them. You can also use this feature to comment or ask for technical assistance. At the end of the webinar, a brief survey will open in, in your browser window, and I'd greatly appreciate if you take a few moments to offer your feedback and to suggest other topics for us to cover. And you can also access the survey from the, the list of widgets across the bottom of your screen. This webinar is being recorded, and it will be posted to AIM.org's Resources Webinars page in just a few days. Now to introduce our featured speakers that we have with us today. Bob Larrabee is the Vice President of Market Intelligence here at AIM, and Bob is an expert in the application of advanced technologies and process improvement to solve business problems and enhance business operations. With over 30 years of industry experience, including product management, R&D, marketing, sales, and education, his passion is to share his knowledge and experience with organizations seeking to improve their operations, raise technology, and drive their business forward. And then we also have with us Mark Brousseau, who is president of Brousseau and Associates. And Mark is a noted marketer, analyst, speaker, and writer with more than 20 years of experience advising leading providers of payment and document automation solutions. As I mentioned, he is president of Brousseau and Associates, which is a full-service marketing, PR, and business development firm specializing in the payment and document automation arenas. So right now, I'm going to turn things over to Bob Larrabee to begin his discussion. Bob? Hey, thank you, Teresa, and, and um, thank you to our uh, underwriters, IBM L and, and Mark, for joining me. It's always great to, uh, to be part of these. This is my first webinar of 2017, and so um, I also welcome everybody that's joined us from around the globe. Um, it's going to be an interesting discussion. Uh, Mark and I are getting to, have gotten together and talked about some of the results of the AIM research that we had done last year and what does it all mean? You know, what were some of the findings and what does it mean for the future? And that's what we're going to share with you uh, here today. And so, you know, we all know that information management really is the cornerstone of any organization. And, you know, when you look at that along with operations management, customer management, resource management, I mean, basically managing and recording what the information knows, what's been said, what inputs are received, decisions, commitments that have been made, all of these things, um, you know, results that are achieved, this, this is paramount to improvement and success of an organization. Now, failure to manage this information properly and make it available for sharing, um, to be able to search it, make it findable, and that's even more important than search. You know, you can search, but the question is, did you really find what it is you're looking for? Uh, being able to control access to it, defining your processes, and, and so on. Um, you know, failure to do that, it really does limit the operational capabilities and your ability to achieve these new goals and, and business directions. And um, as Teresa mentioned, I am chief analyst at um, AIM, and my role is doing research, and I thank you if you've participated in any of the surveys we've done for providing your perceptions of what's going on. You know, in 2016, some of the research that we did found that 20% of the folks we talked to are looking to buy um, either a new or replacement ECM system within the next two years. 
and 15% are looking to migrate to a single existing system. Um, so we see that you know change is certainly on the information management agenda for many organizations in some way, shape, or form. And it really all ties back to getting into uh, better management of this plethora of information that's just coming at us from all these different directions. Um, one of the things that we also looked at was, you know, what's driving organizations in relation to this? And, and so we look at the, these three areas, compliance, regulatory guidelines, um, you know, regulation, and risk. And so the number of large organizations citing compliance and risk as, as the largest driver for their IM initiatives really rose sharply um, from 2015 to 2016. In 2015, 38% said this was the, the reason they were doing it. And in 2016, 59% uh, said it. And, and same thing, 44% of the mid-sized organizations cite this as the biggest drivers. And so, um, you know, smaller organizations were really kind of looking at things like cost savings, productivity improvements, and, and so on to be their more significant drivers. So, you know, the idea that better management over information, better control over what's coming into an organization, um, securing it, using it in, in uh, better ways or more intelligently. You know, I like to refer to AIM as the Association for Intelligent Information Management. Um, and that's really what this is all about. And so, you know, these are some of the stats that we had from last year. And, and I always like to get a sense of what's going on in your mind, those of you who have joined us. Um, and so at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Teresa, and we'll, let's do a quick poll, Teresa. Let's, let's find out what yeah. people are thinking. Yeah, and, and we have a few polls sprinkled throughout this presentation today, and so um, stick close to your keyboards because we want to hear from you. And so with this first poll question, what impact have compliance risk demands had on your information management automation decisions? Is it a primary driver of your information management automation, a key driver, a minor driver, no impact at all? Uh, just from those four choices there, just you know, select one of those uh, options of, of where compliance falls into the scheme of your decision making. And so this is where I'm going to bring um, Mark Brousseau in to go ahead and comment on the results of what you're saying here today. So let me just share those results. And Mark, do you want to jump in and uh, take a look at what people are, how people are answering this? Well, Teresa, it looks like uh, more than three quarters of the folks on the line describe information management automation as being uh, primarily or a key driver coming from compliance and risk demands. And this is no surprise when you look at what's happening in the market today. Organizations are receiving more information than ever from more sources than ever, and they're being asked to push that information faster than ever to more corners of the organization than ever. Holy cow! So it's no surprise that crooks and fraudsters, whether they're inside your organization or outside their organization, are looking for ways to get at that information for nefarious purposes. And when we look at 2016, it was a wake-up call for organizations of all sizes when it comes to compliance compliance, and risk. We saw literally on the front pages of our daily newspapers stories about massive data leaks. In some cases, this was lost patient records. In others, espionage. In some cases, it was retailers losing their credit card information that they were safeguarding on behalf of their valued customers. In all cases, this meant significant internal costs, huge reputational risk, and in some cases, regulatory fines. And in some cases, organizations will never be able to get back to where they were before these breaches happened. And this puts an exclamation point on the point that Bob just made, that more now than ever, organizations have to take great care in all of this information that they're managing. It's not just enough to digitize it. It's not just enough to add a workflow to route it around your organization. You must find ways to safeguard it from cradle to grave. And what's at risk here? Well, literally, the most critical 
asset your organization has. It's, it's information. You have customer information, your intellectual property, your financial records, as well as your project documents. A breach in any one of these areas can have a tremendous trickle-down effect that can literally destroy an organization. How big an impact can this have? Well, we've seen retailers who were impacted by data breaches who have lost billions of dollars in terms of fines, technology costs, and lost revenues. And they're still today trying to get out from under this. And you better believe that the crooks are looking for ways to infiltrate your organization. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And this is not the end of the story when it comes to compliance and risk. Because not only do you have to safeguard that information, you have to ensure that you're doing it in a manner that's compliant with the rules and regulations set out by governing bodies as well as your own internal auditors. Take this stat for example. Today, there are more than 14,000 federal, state, and industry laws, standard, and regulations all about the management of information. And as we sit on this webinar right now, there are people in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere whose job it is to think up more of these regulations. Folks, there are industries whose knees are buckling under the demands of these regulations. We need to not only digitize the data, we need to find ways to make the management of that information better than ever. And so here's a small list of some of the regulations that you've probably had to deal with in your organization. But we could go on for slides and slides and slides more of regulations that are having a tremendous impact on AIM members across the world every day. And as I said to you, that list is growing. So what are you all doing about this? Well, 49% of you believe that unauthorized access by internal staff poses the biggest risk to your data. So many of you are looking for ways to lock down the control of your information through permissions, access controls, hierarchical access, roles and rules-based access. You're implementing antivirus and malware tools. You're putting in strong passwords. Oh, every 30 days I have to change my password. I can't write it down on my desk calendar anymore. Can you believe it? You've also implemented perimeter security. Who is it that can get at servers? Who is it that can get at information? All of this is helping your cause. However, you all have an Achilles heel. Many of you, probably most of you, have antiquated document scanning and capture systems that are creating five vulnerabilities that undo all of the good that I just spelled out on the last page. These are the types of vulnerabilities that lead to huge compliance violations and those scary data breaches that I described a moment ago. So what are they? Well, the first one is the challenge of multiple ingestion processes. Well, now that you have multiple delivery channels through which documents enter your organization, you might not have normalized processes for safeguarding that information. In fact, with fragmented systems, you might have handoffs that introduce opportunities for crooks to get at your information. Additionally, many antiquated scanning and capture systems have no encryption at all. Forget about in transit, forget about at rest. There's no encryption at all. Are you encrypting the information that you're scanning and capturing? And think for a moment. You might say, well, goodness, who would want this information? But think about what it is that's on those documents that you're scanning. You probably have client information. You have financial information. Maybe there's HIPAA-protected information. You must encrypt that information. Additionally, Many of you have unsecured log files. Think about this for a second. You have a scanner and you're scanning and capturing information in your, in your mail room and it goes to a 
server that's sitting out in the open with log files that actually show some of the data that's been captured for those documents. Who's minding the store? Who can access that information? What's to stop someone from sending it elsewhere? This is a big problem in antiquated scanning and capture systems. What's more, many of the systems you people use have poor visibility into the processes that occur. Maybe you have fragmented system. So once information is captured, it's sent elsewhere for a process and comes back to you. Well, what's happened to that information? You don't know. You don't have visibility. You don't have audit logs into who touched the information. You have no control over who touches that information once it leaves your department. You need end-to-end -end intelligent data capture solutions that provide visibility from cradle to grave, tracks who's touching information information and when. And finally, many document scanning and capture systems are providing what can best be described as weak security management. You have to jump through hoops to make changes to who can access information, why and when. It should be easy for administrators to have not only visibility, but control over who's managing their information. All of this is part of what will shape the information management strategies of organizations in 2017. Don't take my word for it. Let me give you an example. A major mortgage lending bank here on the East Coast was facing a big audit issue. They were doing some rudimentary document scanning and capture. This is not an intelligent data capture system. It created a tremendous backlog of images and documents as part of its lending process. The auditors had a meltdown. Not only was this a compliance risk in terms of truth and lending and information back to the borrowers, it also allowed information to sit out in the open, so to speak, for long periods of time. Now recognize that when you're processing mortgage documents. This is a slow and costly manual process in many cases. The root of the problem is that many organizations with antiquated systems and processes have to manually separate and handle these hundred page batches of documents. You have a mix of incoming paper and digital documents, fragmented systems, hard to get control of this. That's the old world. The new world we're entering in 2017 says no more fragmented systems. You need to use a single platform that intelligently scans and captures that information in one platform. It does it faster, more securely, and with more data capture and audit tracking than ever before. And that's exactly what this bank did. And by putting in an intelligent data capture solution, they were able to strengthen the regulatory compliance. They did that through accelerating their turnaround time by capturing more rich data that they could provide to borrowers as well as decision makers. They were able to increase control over those documents and improve the reporting on the back end. So they didn't have to tell auditors to take our word for it. They could show them through reports and real-time visibility. What's more, improving the compliance and their processes for managing documents, this bank was able to reduce their loan closing costs by 25%. Who says there's not money to be made in, in tightening up compliance and risk? And finally, the proved scalability and throughput that was delivered by moving from an antiquated scanning and capture system to an intelligent data capture solution provided them the ability to scale their processing volumes without adding any additional workers or additional software. As a result, this bank is better positioned to not only compete against its competitors, but it's also able to do it confidently, knowing it's not going to run into compliance and risk issues. And so, Bob, that's, that's talk really to us about content chaos. 
Well, and, and that's exactly what you were describing, and it's a great story about that regional bank, Mark, that you know they were able to identify um, some of those areas and to be able to overcome this. I mean, things like the regulatory demands, you know, data breaches, all of these things that you, you reference, lost information, I, I hear all the time that information is either unsearchable or unfindable. Um, and these are some huge challenges, you know, and, and it is content chaos. That's what we're, we're talking about, content chaos, and there is an associated cost with this. You know, the idea that we have poor content management practices, it takes too long to find uh, content. And 62% of the folks that we talked to last year, I mean, that's what they pointed out. This is, this is costing us a whole bunch of money and time and effort. Um, duplicate efforts. Another one, 52%, said that you know they've got these duplicated efforts all over the enterprise, across the enterprise, and insufficient reuse of information. You know, this gets into the whole idea of repurposing information, right? The the idea that we become more intelligent uh, about the way we create and we leverage our information resources. And then, of course, you know, when you look at things like um, review and approval processes. There's too many round-robin emails going out there. A lot of organizations still to this day are using email as the primary uh, tool for a review and approval process. And so you've got all these attachments flying all over the place. Instead of using a, a link to a single source you know, sitting in a repository somewhere, you, you've got all these different attachments that fly all over the place. So content chaos. You know, and then, of course, Unnecessary printing. One of the things that I hear constantly is that information is still being printed. And, and the primary reasons that we, you know, when we asked, why are you still printing this information, especially, you know, you've gone through the effort of scanning it and capturing it and bringing it in, or maybe it, it even entered your, your environment as a digital document, but yet you printed it. And two, the two main reasons, and it, this gets into the human factor, um, one, is I print it so I can sign it. Well, there's ways to do that today, um, you know, through the use of e-signature technology. And the second one is I like to have it in my hand when I go to a meeting because I want to make notes on it. Um, so it's that, that human element. Um, when we look at, at extending ECM, you know, we, we talk about the extension of ECM um, and the functionality. 38% of the people that we talk to are really actively focused at extending their ECM functionality um, across the enterprise and even in some cases beyond the enterprise walls. What they're looking at is, you know, if you look at the supply chain and they're looking at their suppliers, they're looking at outside partnerships, um, being able to extend their capabilities of the, uh, the information ecosystem, if you will, to en encompass all of that. 25% uh, said that their focus right now is rolling out to a wider user base and improving collaboration for 30%. So the idea that they want to get more interactive with each other and with this information. And then finally, you know, mobility, right? How many of us have smartphones today? Pretty much everybody. Um, I see them everywhere. And the idea that we use these devices in our personal lives. We do personal banking. We do all kinds of things with it. But yet in business, it's not so common, you know, and there's a, whole, a wide variety of reasons for this, but 21% said that they're, they're actually working on mobile and remote access to their information um, and their business processes. And one of the reasons for this is, you know, we want to become more efficient, more productive. There's this whole 24-7 mindset. Um, to, a, to a certain degree, uh, it's an interesting situation because I think it was France last month, or maybe it was just a couple of weeks ago, that pretty much put into place a government regulation saying that uh, you're not expected to, you're, and your employer cannot expect you to um, be active in the off hours <laughs> um, using mobile devices. And so it's kind of interesting, you know, but yet this is something that businesses need to do, organizations need to do. And so I'm kind of curious, Teresa, let's go back out to our audience and, and see you know, what, what has changed um, uh, in relation to capture compared to a couple of years ago? Well, certainly. So the question is, how, ha how has the volume of information that your organization captures changed compared to two years ago? So is it significantly higher? So that's more than a, a 
10% increase, slightly higher, you know, up to a 10% increase, unchanged, slightly lower, or significantly lower. So if you would uh, check off one of those and submit that, and um, again, Mark, please come on in here and let's take a look at how people are answering here. Well, I guess everybody's in the right place, Teresa and Bob, because 93, 94% of the folks on the line say that the volume of information our organization captures is either slightly higher or significantly higher compared to two years ago. Look at this. Nearly two-thirds of the folks on the line, guys, mm -hmm. say it's significantly higher. This is really no surprise, right? It wasn't too long ago that when you said capture, people immediately thought of scanning, right? There was a time when lots of folks thought back-end scanning was a really important thing. But what folks have realized is that in this era of big data, right, we're trying to wrap our heads around what do we do with all this exploding data? Well, first of all, we need to digitize it. We need to get it in a way that it's usable, it's accessible, it's available. And so we have to digitize it. Now we've shifted our thinking away from scanning and toward intelligent capture. We need to capture more information and intelligently route it to accelerate the availability of that information to the knowledge workers who need it. And Bob it perfectly described exactly how that's manifesting itself in this extension of ECM solutions. And mobile is just one example of how organizations are going to have to rethink the availability of this information. And when you all told us that your information capture volumes are growing. Well, this is no surprise. Here's one example from the healthcare space where a recent trade journal said that every hour treating a patient in America creates at least 30 minutes of paperwork. This makes perfect sense. All those downstream users who need to be able to not only get the regulatory and treatment information, but also the billing information and the pr proscriptive information to make sure that they can help that, client, that patient throughout the process. Across industries, capture requirements are not only becoming larger, they're becoming more complex. So it's not picture taking anymore. It's not just capturing header information from an invoice, i.e. The, inf the supplier information at the top of the invoice. Now, organizations are saying, well, why aren't we capturing all the line item detail on that invoice so that we can make smarter business decisions about what's happening with our purchasing spend management organizations call this. And so we're finding a situation where organizations are capturing not only more documents, but more information from those documents than ever. Unfortunately, the reality for most organizations is that they can't keep up with these demands. It's our antiquated systems that we're using that's holding us down. Think about your organization for a moment. Information might be coming into you from customers, from field workers, from folks in branch or remote offices, as well as your mail room. And you know what? That information is coming in as paper. It's coming in via email, via fax, maybe a website, maybe one of those mobile devices that the millennials love so much. It might be coming in from a mobile location, maybe a BPO provider you have in a specific region, maybe from your own shared services center. And what happens is, is that organizations are not set up to manage that information as it flows through those back-end processes to the systems and processes of record, to the knowledge workers who need it. Think again about that financial organization I described a moment ago. In many cases, the enterprise resource planning system, the ERP system, is the most expensive system a business could buy. Businesses are spending millions of dollars to purchase and millions of dollars to maintain these ERP systems. They're the financial nerve center of the organization. And yet, in front of many of those systems, Businesses have what? Manual, semi-automated, antiquated, paper-based financial processes that make it difficult to get the 
food into those systems, the fuel those systems need to do what they were purchased for. And so we have this environment of information chaos. 45% of documents that are scanned are, were born digital, and many of the rest would be other than added signatures. Two-thirds of invoices that arrive in organizations as PDF attachments are getting printed and processed as paper. In many cases, I see organizations that have scanning and capture systems, and they receive PDF attachments, and they print them out and rescan them. Holy cow, Bob. About one-third of invoices that arrive electronically via email or fax are getting printed, just as I described. This can't keep happening because what this does to organizations is it results in higher labor costs. It results in poor business agility. You can't see the information that's coming into your organization. You are forever stuck in a reactive mode to customer service trends, to sales trends. You're going to get more customer complaints because you can't see problems in your supply chain until it's too late. You're going to have slow inventory returns and higher day sales outstanding. If you're in a financial environment, you're going to end up with late payments and penalties and fines, security breaches and compliance violations. If only we could get a handle on our content, we can avoid all of this. Well, let me give you an example of a state government that did just that. These guys are processing tax returns on behalf of their citizens. They were having a big issue when it came to tax filing times with having the horsepower to handle their quarterly payments. Importantly, they needed the ability to outsource checks from tax returns. So it wasn't enough to pay, take pictures of documents. They needed to intelligently separate which documents were which and capture the necessary information from each one. In their old environment, they were doing this in an inconsistent manual process. What happened? It required them to staff up with temporary workers. It required them to do manual document preparation and manual document sorting on the back end. The front end and the back end, they were handling paper, all the while with a scanning and capture system sitting in between. I'm not making this up. So what they needed to do to be good, to be good, um, to the constituents, to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. They needed to find a way to speed the processing turnaround, to eliminate these manual processes, to get that money in the bank faster, and to eliminate all the overhead associated with it. Additionally, they needed to accelerate that delivery of information to the downstream applications. They needed to get their content under control. They needed to be able to have a way to get at the information associated with a taxpayer more quickly so that if a call came in from a taxpayer, they could respond in a better manner, but also to head off those calls by eliminating unnecessary outbound messages. You know, remember those sayings about things being crossed in the mail? That's in a paper environment. So what they do? They put in an intelligent data capture solution that allowed them to automate the ingestion of those documents, whether they come in paper or electronic, to automatically extract information from each document to identify it as a check or a tax return, then to classify the document, apply business rules to how it would be electronically routed, to provide that information seamlessly to the downstream systems. And all of this allowed them to accelerate the process. Today, they're processing their checks and their full-page documents commingled without all that pre 
sorting required. They're able to automate the outsorting of those scan checks so that they can go for safe storage, deposit it electronically. They're able to capture barcode information automatically to accelerate that information delivery downstream. And they're doing all of this with audit trails that keep debits and credits together, eliminating exceptions and improving their compliance and security. Let me give you another example. This one from the UK. There's a government organization that is a property management company that provides affordable housing to UK families. These folks deal with tens of millions of pages of housing files, and they were stored in file drawers across 750 offices in the UK. Holy cow. These people are trying to do good work on behalf of at-risk families in the UK, but content chaos was undermining their mission. They needed a way to get at information so they could help put these families in housing more quickly. They needed to get the paper out of the way. So what did they do? They implemented an intelligent data capture solution that allowed them to digitize all of those stored documents, as well as all the day forward information, extract, classify the documents, and be able to access, find, as Bob said, the information they need to help those families get to the housing they need so desperately. The first phase of this was to transform that scanned images into full-page output that they could use to drive downstream systems. Then they've implemented a digital mailroom that allows them to scan all of the documents that come into their organization so that they're able to digitize all of their content. So they now have eliminated content chaos, not just for one application, but for all of their applications. Bob, these are two examples of organizations that have gotten control of their content. And, and they are great examples, Mark. They really are. You know, one of the things that, that we're talking about here, you know, the, the idea of all those manual processes, and you were talking about that, and the idea of getting that information from the front end to the back end systems and from source to process. I mean, all of this, all of this has to come into play. And, and unfortunately, one of the things that we're seeing, especially in relation to inbound content, 58% of the folks that we talked to in 2016 said their inbound handling is ad hoc. It's all over the place. People are doing whatever they feel is appropriate um, with no set structure, no set of guidelines, if you will. And 23% said that they actually do have elements of multi-channel inbound integration, but only 5% are automating in in you know, using automated routing um, to multiple processes. I mean, there's this huge opportunity that's being missed. And one of the things that, that I find interesting, um, a lot of things, a lot of times what I'm hearing is folks from, uh, I'm going to say, outside the U.S. or the North American uh, market and even in the U.K. Are, are more focused on the idea that documents uh, or content and workflow and BPM are so tightly integrated and so tightly tied together. You know, content without process goes nowhere, and process without content serves no purpose. And so this is one of the things that, that um, we've got to look at. We've got to kind of be more proactive than reactive. And if it's a reactive situation, try to turn it into something that's more positive. So, you know, this is where analytics and, and automation come into play. You know, 15% are using automated or assisted classification. You talked about some of these things. You know, at the point of creation or declaration, 11% are using analytics to extract that metadata, um, do metadata correction, but also security, you know, applying access and, and uh, uh, security controls. And you talked about visibility into the business or insight into the business. 12% are actually using content analytics for business insight. Um, which means, of course, there's a huge opportunity there. That beyond the 12%, you know, those folks should be doing it. But the idea is that they're trying to get a better handle on uh, how their businesses are functioning. And what we're talking about here is that capture has to be integrated with all of the delivery channels, all the way through the process, from the front to the back. 
um, from the time we ingest something to the time that we, we touch it all the way through the process until we deliver it to its final place. And so, Teresa, you know, I really do like the idea of polls. And let's see what folks out there are thinking in relation to this. Well, this is uh, one of the questions where it's check all that apply. So through which of the following channels do you capture more documents compared to two years ago? Through the mail, fax, email, web, um, through SharePoint, uh, through mobile, or through shared services centers. Um, which of these, how many of these, um, are you capturing more documents now than what you were two years ago? So we'll tick off a couple of those that apply to you. And um, Mark, how are we seeing, how, how is this comparing to what you are also seeing out in the marketplace? So it looks like the leader in the clubhouse, Teresa and Bob, is emails. 77% of the folks on the line say they're receiving more email documents compared to two years ago. Ne nearly half of the folks on the line, 42.9% say the web is generating more documents compared to two years ago. Hold that thought. I think in, in, when we do this next year, we'll see that that goes up even more. SharePoint, no surprise. A popular topic at AIM conference, um, has also seen a significant increase. And there's mobile, Bob, 14% of the yep. folks on the line. The challenge organizations face when they're receiving these documents via multiple delivery channels is that while paper was clearly not the right way to be capturing documents. Now that we have this diversification of delivery channels, organizations have not figured out how to normalize the handling of those documents across those delivery channels. And if you're sitting on an antiquated scanning or capture solution, you're in a really bad position to solve that problem. What you need is intelligent technology that allows you to ingest documents via in any delivery channel in any format, paper or electronic, to extract the information you need, then to classify the documents, to determine which documents are which, to eliminate all that manual and post-document sorting that that state government I described was doing, then to align the information with what you might have stored in downstream systems of record, to validate that the information you've captured is correct, that the document is the one you're expecting, and then finally, to connect all of this to any downstream systems or processes. It all starts with ingestion, Bob. So in the dark days of, of AIM, we used to talk about scanning. And it was, it was typically with the bigger device, the better. But today the reality is, is that organizations are ingesting paper and electronic documents via a number of methods. And all of these are necessary in the typical environment. So if you can check one or two boxes, that's not enough. You need to expect to receive documents, as our poll just showed, via a number of delivery channels. Next, you need to be able to extract information, and it's not just optical character recognition. You need to be able to use a multiple number of extraction techniques to get the full amount of information you need for your business processes. Once you have that information, you can then start to apply business rules that allow you to determine what type of documents you have and how it should flow in your organization. That extraction also helps you classify documents. So in the example of the property management organization, it wasn't enough for them to automate one application they wanted to automate their digital mailroom so they could separate electronically invoices from correspondence from applications. If your organization is not doing that today, I encourage you to look into classification technologies. And then once we've extracted that data, we need to make sure it's correct. We need to make sure it aligns correctly with information that we have stored in a downstream system. 
In this example, we're looking at an invoice that's comparing the data we've captured to what is stored in an ERP system. This allows us to eliminate some of those manual processes required to match and post invoices in the, in the past. But that's just one example of how we can align this data. Any captured information can be compared to information stored in the system of record. And finally, we need to connect that information all of that content to those downstream users, systems, and processes that need it to drive the business. All of this together accelerates the access to information by those knowledge workers. One healthcare organization was able to do this by implementing an intelligent data capture solution as part of their records management processes. They were dealing with picture taking in the past. But what happened was it took almost a week to be able to get the information they needed into the hands of the folks who were doing the billing. People forget that patient records typically trigger the billing process at hospitals. So it's not just a picture taking exercise. You need to identify and extract information so that you can be able to bill uh, bill provider uh, bill uh, uh, payers more quickly, and that lowers your day sales outstanding. In other words, it puts money in the bank faster by using an intelligent data capture solution. These folks reduce their records and scanning turnaround from several days to just four hours. That's right. They were able to start the billing process the same day that the records hit. They were able to increase their efficiency of their staff by 50%. They were doing a lot of manual document sorting and lots of manual keying of information. What's more, they were able to use the document classification technology to automatically outsort some batch separator sheets that they were using as part of their process. Why is this important? Well, they ended up saving 5000 bucks a month by reusing these separator sheets. They literally were taking delivery of a pallet of paper, folks. That is the power of intelligent data capture in terms of managing those multiple delivery streams. Absolutely. And, and you know, that 5000 a month, when you look at that, um, that's just initially what they've got there. And, and what are the peripheral benefits as a result of that? I mean, this is, these are all some of the things to consider. You know, we've got organizations with millions of – or. In one case, I had somebody tell me we've got billions of pages of paper sitting around in, in different places. And, you know, I asked the question, why? And they said, well, people don't want to get rid of it, <laughs> the human factor. So, so consider this. You know, technology is there. Technology is, is there to help us, um, to help us automate wherever and whenever possible. The, the human factor is typically the reason why organizations aren't moving or moving as quickly. You know, when you look at the organization as a whole, you've got people, you've got process, you've got the content. Um, all of these things are tightly tied together, tightly aligned together. You know, and as I mentioned earlier, reading and note-taking, along with um, a lack of management initiatives to move away from paper, really is what's preventing a lot of organizations from doing this. And 56% of the people said they're looking to automate their manual processes with document classification. This is part of what Mark just talked about, the whole idea of the ingest, the extract, use that information to, to do auto classification to help us with this and, and eliminate that content chaos. Um, get better control over over the information and the processes. And so some of the things that I look at, you know, ensure that the life cycles are defined for all types of content um, in each type of re repository you have. This is one of the things that we, we talk about. Well, I have to keep the paper forever, or I have to keep the information forever. Not necessarily. In some cases, yes, that may be true. Um, the nuclear industry, for example, um, but in others, there are certain types of information that you don't have to keep forever. And so, you know, identify what that is. That gets into the idea of governance. Um, implement retention and deletion policies and, and look at it from a defensibility standpoint that if you eliminate this information, um, would you be able to, to sustain a, a defensible position in audit or litigation? And then finally, and I think this is the most important, is include the user community. 
in these discussions. Nobody knows better how the work is being done, what the pain points are than they do. Um, and a lot of times they're the last ones to find out that there's an initiative actually taking place. And so include the user community, get their feedback. Now it may be that they tell you something and you can't really act upon it, but at least you've given an opportunity for them to speak and you've taken the opportunity to hear what their challenges are. And so Teresa, let's one more time. Um, let's see what folks are thinking here. Yeah, I think this is going to be a great way to kick off our, our Q&A session as well. Um, so we're asking you, which of the following will have the biggest impact in your information strategy coming up in this year in 2017? Um, do you think that strengthening compliance and risk, eliminating the content chaos, better managing multiple capture channels, or analytics? You know, which of these will have the biggest impact in your strategy this coming year? And so. Um, uh, Mark and Bob, I'd like for the two of you just to um, share what you're seeing here in with these results. Well, it looks like Mark, more than half of the folks on the I, – I was just going to say, Bob, it looks like more than half of the folks on the line have identified eliminating content chaos, as you so yep. eloquently described, as, as being the key driver of their information management uh, strategy this year. 17% of the folks identify strengthening compliance and risk as the key driver, followed by analytics and better managing multiple capture channels. I would probably argue that numbers two and three, eliminating content chaos and better managing those those delivery channels go hand in hand. So in reality, more than two-thirds of the folks on the line um, have identified that content chaos. And, and really, Bob, this is the reason we did this webinar today, is today organizations are mindful of the fact that information management isn't a tactical initiative. It's a strategic initiative. In strategic, many cases, exactly. the future viability of your business rests on your proficiency in managing that information, not just safeguarding and not just capturing it, but also safeguarding it, making it accessible to knowledge workers, to be able to make the decisions that are driven by analytics. And so whichever one of these drivers are were, were, were number one on your list, the message we want to leave you with today is to make sure that 2017 is the year your organization steps up to better manage its information, whether you use technologies such as intelligent data capture or others, make sure this is the year that you draw the line in the sand and you say, we're going to make that investment in better ma managing our information better than ever. Bob, what did you want to say? Oh, I, I, I totally agree. And, you know, when you, if you want to look at it sequentially, when you better manage your, your capture channels, um, of course, that's the starting point, right? Um, this is where the information is coming from, the source of the information. If we can get better control over that um, and better align that to what our business goals are, of course, that helps in eliminating the content chaos. And when you combine the analytics to understand what we have, where it can be used, how it can be used, where it should be used in interaction with processes, then all of those um, help us with strengthening compliance and risk. They're, they're extremely tightly tied together. And I, I don't care if you're in the North American region or, you know, it's a global issue, um, regardless of where you are. If you're in Europe, if you're in Latin America, if you're in Asia, um, the, the same fundamental issues exist, and content chaos is a reality around the globe. Um, so I, I think this is, you know, um, uh, indicative of what we've seen in 2016, and, and like you said, in 2017, it's the year to become more of a strategist you know, become more proactive than reactive. Teresa? Well, thank you. Um, I, we've been listening to Bob Larrabee and Mark Brousseau, and I want to get to a couple of the questions here. Um, I, and, and one question in particular, and, and Bob, I'm going to direct this to start the – have you start to answer this question first. Someone is saying that that they are one of those companies that has tens of thousands of boxes of paper stored, and um, but they're in with doing that cost analysis, the, you know, the price to scan and to categorize and, and, and of all of these old documents, and, and they call them ancient documents, so I'm mm -hmm. really curious as to how old this information is, um, that those costs is far greater than the annual cost to just simply maintain the boxes. Um, how do you how do people fund that or how do they make the case 
for the ROI and just so that, so that they can have better control of the information that's lost in those documents? It's actually an interesting question. Um, in, in my prior life, um, prior to AIM, and actually I've had this conversation since since being with AIM, um, there was one instance that comes to mind. It was um, an insurance carrier that I was dealing with um, when I was working for a software vendor, and it was exactly the same question. We have this huge warehouse, tens of thousands of boxes that, it, that are stored in the warehouse. Um, we want to digitize it, but does it really make sense? And the first question I asked was, um, what is the reason that you're keeping all of this paper? Is there a legal reason or, or a regulatory reason? And the answer was no. Um, they indicated that they had the first document that they ever had ever written, their very first contract, which dated back to the late 1700s. Um, and so the first thing I said was, well, you have to determine what has business value, <laughs> first of all, um, that you have to keep regulatory-wise, legally, um, and then what has a business value in the sense that um, it would be purposeful for you today? And if you can say everything all the way back to the 1700s is valid, then fine, you know, we'll work with you and figure out a way to keep it. But if the answer is no, then eliminate those documents that have no more value, rot, you know, what we call rot, redundant, outdated, or trivial information. Um, same, same holds true of duplicate. Uh, copies of information. If you have four or five different copies of the same thing, what is the actual reason for it? Could you eliminate the duplicates and then point to the singular that's left over and say, this is our official, you know, and I'll use the term record, but this is our, for, uh, our official reference or record in relation to what we're trying to do here. Mark, what are, what are your thoughts on that? You said it right, and I'd, I'd, I'd add here that just as any good records manager would tell you that not all data is cre created equal, um, just because they're sitting in your basement today doesn't mean you need to keep them. So as Bob suggested a few slides ago, create your business requirements, understand your information needs, and make decisions based on those. So you won't need to, just as you won't need to capture all of the information you receive, you don't need to keep all of the documents you have sitting in your file drawers or in your basement. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many good questions coming in, and I am doing, I'm going to do my best to try to get to a couple more of those in here, but I just quickly wanted to point out some additional contact information. Um, the information that uh, Bob and all the statistics he was sharing was coming from the great research work that he and his team does, and that's found at aim.org slash research. And Bob, you also have a new white paper out here. It's actually, it's, it's an e-book about what did we learn from the AIM community in 2016. And um, this is also available right. for download. Um, so when you download a copy of the slides, you can uh, click on that link, and then it'll take you over there to, to get that. Also, I have the link in the resources section for you as well. So if you click on that, it'll open in a new a browser tab for you, and you can uh, get that paper in just a moment. And you know, feel free to reach out to Bob with any additional questions at any point. And then also, Mark wanted to give you a quick opportunity um, to uh, mention if you would like a little bit more about IBML. I know you work with them um, in in part of your capacity and in, in with your consulting and analytics work. And I just want to give you the opportunity to mention them a bit more. Absolutely. I'm, I'm pleased that IBML invited me here to co-present with Bob today. IBML is the underwriter of this webinar, and they provide technologies that address many of the issues we've discussed today. So if you're looking to control your content to better safeguard the information your organization receives, to find a way to better manage those multiple delivery channels, and to get the visibility into the information your organization manages, I encourage you to visit IBML.com to learn about their intelligent data capture solutions. Uh, also, we would be remiss, Teresa and Bob, if we didn't mention that IBML will be participating at the AIM conference that's upcoming in Orlando, Florida. Absolutely. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing you and, and the folks over at IBML, and, and thank you again um, to IBML for underwriting this particular uh, seminar series. The thing about the Orlando conference, other than the fact that, of course, it's in Orlando, um, there are a bunch of things. Mark and I will be speaking um, at the conference, but also we have 
um, what's called our pre-conference training sessions. Uh, pre-conference training, I'll actually be teaching the BPM class, business process management class, um, and this is part of the AIM training cur curriculum. Um, we have ECM, ERM, BPM, and our certified information professional um, that will all be taught there. Um, so it's really exciting. It's, it's going to be an exciting several days in Orlando, and if you do get the chance, I strongly encourage you, come on down, um, see what's happening, build up your, your peer network, and you know, if you see Mark or I roaming around, pull us aside and say, hey, you know, when I sat in on that webinar, you said, and I'll leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, a lot of information about the conference already available to you um, to get more information. So if you go to aimconference.com, there's a list of all of the sessions that are there. Um, as the, the last few speaking sessions get filled, that information is updated right away. I know some great keynotes have been lined up for this. Some roundtable discussions are going on. And I know Mark's also participating in one of those roundtable discussions, uh, facilitating that. And so um, a lot of good interactivity and peer connection. Uh, the, the big part of, of what I love about going to the conference is that it's about peer connection and the education and learning. And, and it's just a fabulous resource. If you do register before the end of this month, you do uh, receive a discount on the price and that early bird pricing goes away February 1. So uh, check it out and register for that here. Um, just want to say that you know, we are at the end of our webinar hour and uh, very much want to thank uh, uh, Mark Brousseau and Bob Larrabee for their time today. And uh, also just want to remind everyone that this webinar has been recorded and it will be available in the next day or two at the AIM.org's resources webinars page. Um, don't forget to download the resources that are that are to the right side of the slide area. Um, and also when the webinar is over with that survey is going to open up for you and I value your feedback. Um, and again, thank you very much to IBML for your underwriting and, and sponsorship of this webinar. Without the support from our solution providers, AIM wouldn't be able to bring you these free educational programs. So thank you very much IBML for your contributions. And as we do bring our webinar to a close, I do want to leave uh, you with with our speakers closing thoughts or their key takeaways from everything that we've shared today. So I'm going to begin first with Mark Brousseau and uh, Mark your closing thoughts today. The management of information is no longer a tactical back office function at organizations and that's organizations across industries and across the globe. Today information management is a strategic imperative for businesses who hope to su succeed in our emerging digital trade and commerce environment. Thank you, Mark. And Bob Larrabee, your closing thoughts today. Well, I think that, um, you know, it gets down to strategy um, and it gets down to the human factor and getting folks involved. If you're brought into a reactive situation where something needs to be done, try to turn that into a positive. Go from reactive to strategic mode, um, a proactive mode. So while you're going through and addressing these issues, um, look at it from that perspective. Talk to the user community. And by all means, you know, the, the slide that Mark had put up there that talked about um, ingest, extract, and so on, those five steps, is very important. And I would use that as a reference and say, as you're planning, as you're going through these stages, Look at that and say, where do we ingest, how do we extract, what do we extract, and how do we leverage these things all the way through from first point of contact through the delivery process, your, your end delivery channels. Thank you, Bob. And thank you, everyone, for your time today. And we will see you on our next webinar. For AIM, this is Teresa Resick, and have a good afternoon. <laughs>